Hi guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. My name is Camille from Preto Education and welcome to our chest pain explainer. We'll be explaining chest pain and then we'll go over to an example to see in action. Chest pain is very, very common to see in practice. You will encounter it wherever you work. It's something that you must be familiar with and it can present in a variety of age groups. It can be serious, life-threatening in cases of MI, or it can be more benign in cases of gastritis, for example, which can present with chest pain. It's important to get the fundamentals right. So let's start with asking about the pain itself. Helpfully, there's a mnemonic you can use. Socrates. S. S stands for sight. So you're going to ask about where the pain is. Central chest pain, to the left, to the right. O stands for onset. You're going to ask the patient, when did the pain start? How did it develop? Did something trigger it? Anything like that. C stands for character. What is the character of the pain? This will enable you to get familiarize yourself with. Is it a stabbing pain, griping pain? What kind of pain is it? R stands for radiation. Does the pain travel anywhere else? Left arm, jaw, typically for MI. A stands for associated symptoms. Is there any nausea, clamminess, vomiting, for example? T for timing. Timing will give you an indication about how long the pain lasts. You know, what's going on at that time? Is there any particular time of day? How long does the pain last in total? E, exacerbating and relieving factors. So is there anything that makes the pain worse? Anything that makes the pain better? For example, activity, exercise makes it worse. Any medication makes it better. And finally, S at the end, severity. Severe, how severe is the pain? one to 10 factors or mild, moderate, severe. Also, with fundamentals of chest pain, you wanna talk about the red flags. These are things that can give you an indication that something more serious is happening. Is it a tight griping chest pain with the radiation to the left jaw and the left arm? Hmm, we're concerned about this. Is there any issues with the breathing? Is the patient being short of breath? This is also concerning, it's a red flag. Drug use, is there any recent drug use? typically cocaine, methamphetamines, this can allude towards a more serious sinister cause. Then you'll proceed to think about a systems review, typically the pulmonary system. So think about the breathing, shortness of breath, cough, possibly any syncope. Risk factors you must cover in a chest pain history. Risk factors for this include smoking, BMI and lifestyle. Are they sedentary? Are they active? Have they had any recent surgery or travel anywhere on, on a plane, for example, where they've been immobilized? The last thing is past medical history as well. Consider do they have cardiac issues in the past? And finally, safety net. This is very, very important. You must safety net the patient. For example, with a chest pain, let the patient know. If you have this type of chest pain, severe, central, griping chest pain, that radiates to the jaw, or you're feeling sweaty, clammy, possibly with shortness of breath, this is serious. You need to access emergency healthcare straight away. Go to any or 4999. That's very important. Hi, my name is Camille. I'm one of the clinicians here at the practice. Can I just start by confirming your name and date of birth, please? I'm Alan Smith, and my date of birth is 1st of April, 1962. Nice to meet you, Mr. Smith. The receptionist tells me you've come in with some chest pain today. Is that right? That's correct. That's correct. So tell me a little bit more about this chest pain and how I can help today. I'm a little bit worried about this chest pain actually. Um, it's been going on for quite a few months and it's been coming and going, but it's becoming more frequent and that's why I've come to see you. Okay. Oh, well, you've definitely done the right thing by coming to see us and seeking help and we'll try and do our best to address these concerns for you. So tell me about this chest pain. Where is the site of the chest pain? Um, really in the center of the chest. Okay. Hmm. Since when has this been going on, you say months or? A couple of months, probably coming up to a year. Okay, and does it happen every day or what? It doesn't really happen every day, but it definitely happens more when I'm doing things. Mm. And can you describe the pain at all? Yeah, it's a very, um, it's a very strong ache sometimes, mm. you know, as if somebody is pressing on my chest. Okay, yeah. Mm. And does the pain travel anywhere else or does it stay in the center of your chest? Just stays there. Okay. 
And when you're feeling these chest pains, do you have any other symptoms? For example, do you feel short breath? Do you feel nauseous? I definitely feel nauseous whenever I get the pain. Okay. What about shortness of breath? No shortness of breath. Okay, what about clamminess, sweating, anything like that? Not that I've noticed. Have you ever fainted with it? No, definitely not. Okay. Okay, that, that makes sense. Thank you for, for telling me that. And what about in terms of timings? Does it get better in the morning, evening, that kind of thing? Not really particularly any time, you know, quite random sometimes. And how long does it, would it last? Probably about 10 minutes. 10 minutes uh, or so? Five, 10 minutes maybe. Hmm. You can see how that's affecting your life. Mm. Is there anything that makes it, the pain better or worse, for example? Uh, particularly when I, when I rest. Okay. And when I sit down, you know, it, and just to try to take my mind off it, it kind of goes away. Okay, so the pain does, does resolve. And what about making it worse? Does anything make it worse? I have noticed that whenever I go out into the garden to deal with the grass with my lawnmower, it definitely, uh, definitely comes on. I don't know what it is, mm. but if, I feel like whenever I'm doing something, you know, I break a sweat with, that's mm. when the pain comes on. Okay. And if you were to describe this pain, I know it's quite difficult to say, you know, experiencing it now, but on a scale of one to 10, with 10 being the severest level of pain, how, how severe would you say your pain is? Probably say a seven or an eight, so quite bad really. Okay. So you're describing to me a, a sort of a seven, eight out of 10 central chest pain that's been going on for the past couple of months. It's quite intermittent really, coming and going. It lasts about 10 minutes or so. You don't really know exactly when it starts, but it does tend to be associated with when you're perhaps doing some activities, mm -hmm. mowing the lawn, for example, that kind of thing. Is that a fair summary of what you've just told me? I think so. Okay. Is there anything you're particularly concerned about? Well, on your mind? I have quite bad hay fever, you see. Mm -hmm. And because I've noticed that it's whenever I go into the garden when I lower my mower, do you think it might be my hay fever that's just acting up? Potentially not, could be something different, but let's put that to the side and keep it in our minds, okay? Okay, no problem. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about things, okay? So tell me about yourself in general, we'll ask more questions about that and then we, we should come back to it. So tell me, do you have shortness of breath regularly or that kind of thing or? No, no, I feel nothing, all right. Nothing like, you've said you've not had any fainting episodes, anything like that? No. No, okay. So we'll talk about a little bit about your past medical history. Mm -hmm. Do you suffer from any, any other conditions that I should be aware of? I have blood pressure, high okay. blood pressure. High blood pressure, yeah. okay. And do you have anything like diabetes? No. No, okay. Have you ever had any chest trouble in the past with your heart? No, not at all. Any breathing problems, COPD, asthma, that kind of thing? No. Okay, all right. Any surgery in the recent past or even before that? No, no surgeries. No surgeries. So the only thing is hypertension. Mm. Okay. And do you take any medications at all? Yeah, I tr take something called Ramipril. Okay. And, um, but I, w I go for my regular reviews and they tell me my blood pressure is all right. Okay, that's all right. Anything else that you take over the counter, anything like that? No, not particularly. No. When you've been having these chest pains, have you been taking any pain relief? Not really, not no. really. Like I said, I just sit down and then, you know, give it a few minutes and then it goes away. Okay. Do you have any allergies that I should be aware of? No allergies per se, but I do get bad hay fever. Okay. That's, so pollen probably mm. might be an allergen for you. All right, right, okay. Okay. What about a family history? I mean, any immediate relatives? So parents, siblings, that kind of thing. If, you know, if they've had any sort of heart trouble in the past? My dad actually passed away with a heart attack oh, he did. Um, okay. and he was about 60 years old. Okay. Um, and my mum, she had a stroke when she was 64. Okay. So, but, but that's all really. Okay. Relatively on the younger side compared mm -hmm. to others. Okay. Is that something that's playing on your mind at all or anything like that? No. N not really. Not until you've mentioned things like this, but I think, you know, I, I, I actually think it might be my hay fever. Okay. So we'll, we'll circle back to that um, hay fever. I can understand that's playing on your mind as well. Is your hay fever under control at the minute? Um, it is at the moment, but of course the weather's changing, isn't mm, it? Absolutely, okay. All the risk factors. So when we talk about heart disease, we like to ask about things like smoking. Do you smoke? Yeah, I, I do smoke, unfortunately. Okay. I've tried my best to quit, but I'm down to 10 a day. You're 10 a day and that's smoking tobacco, is it? Yes. Okay. Do you drink any alcohol at all? No, not really. No, okay. Would you say you have an um, active lifestyle or is it quite sedentary? I could be quite, I should probably be more active, but okay. I, I work as a taxi driver, so yeah. I'm largely sat down most of my time. Mm. And how about your diet otherwise? 
Not very great. Okay. What kind of things would a typical meal would be? Um, you know, quite um, a fatty, quite oily. Um, okay. I do like to indulge. Okay, fine. And do you normally, you know, around the house, do you need any help with anything or are you normally quite okay doing what you need to do on a daily basis? No, I'm all right. Me and my wife, we live in a bungalow. Yeah. So, you know, we've got plenty of space. Yeah. And do you still work? I do, yeah. Yeah. Okay, what do you do as a work? Oh, I'm a taxi man. Oh, okay. Taxi driver. You've told me all about your, your chest pain today. I listed some symptoms from yourself and, you know, asking about certain things as well. Um, is there anything else that you wanted to get off your chest while we're, we're speaking? Not really. Just quite keen to know what's going on. So in terms of what's been going on with yourself, with what you've explained to me, you've explained this chest pain that, you know, when you're doing some activities, it tends to get worse, but it tends, does tend to really, you know, improve when you're resting mm. and with your sort of risk profile your age and you know your risk factors such as your smoking and these kind of things i'm leaning towards a diagnosis of angina have you ever heard of this uh, it's been mentioned but i don't really know much about it okay so angina is a heart condition which the blood vessels of that supply the blood to the heart muscle are a bit narrow that's mainly due to something called cholesterol buildup in the the arteries okay and this can cause narrowing so when the heart pumps faster when we're exercising for example and needs more blood supply that's when you can feel these pains because not enough blood is reaching the heart tissue right okay that okay. makes sense okay angina can be quite well managed providing you know the right treatment and you know how to look after yourself angina can actually be well managed in the community providing you're on the right treatment and you're looking after yourself and you do some things in terms of your lifestyle that can help you as well. Okay. So in terms of angina, we can give you something called GTN spray, which you can spray in the mouth under the tongue whenever you're feeling like you're having an episode and it quite rapidly will provide you relief. Oh. Or when you're thinking that you will perform some strenuous activity, you can use it as well. That's good. Yeah, and we also try on some medication called a beta blocker. Mm -hmm. which is a tablet you take every day and that should help protect the heart as well. Okay. Some things that you can do for yourself is perhaps, you know, consider s stopping or cutting down further on the cigarettes. Mm -hmm. Perhaps a more uh, healthy lifestyle in terms of food choices mm -hmm. and activity levels. Mm -hmm. And these kind of things would all help for your angina. Fine. You'll probably need a further employment to explain these things further and get you on the exact right medication doses and make sure everything is teed up for you to go. I'd appreciate that. Of course. Before you go, I just want to say that this is not associated with your hay fever, so I just want to put that to a side. Right, okay. Uh, okay, so this is angina, it's a separate <clears throat> issue. Okay. Finally, I want to give some safety netting. So these are the things you should look out for in case things get worse, things are not improving, okay? Mm -hmm. So angina can lead to some more serious things such as heart attacks. Um, so something that you should be aware of, and we explain this to every patient that we diagnose with angina. If the chest pain is not getting better after the GTN spray, if there's tight constricting feeling in the chest, which is just not resolving, any pain to the left jaw, left arm, sweaty, clammy feeling, feeling very nauseous or being sick, these are more sort of serious signs. They sound serious. Of course. And in this case, you must seek immediate emergency help, whether that's presenting yourself to any or phoning 999. I know that's quite a lot for me to say, and I don't want to scare you, but we must be realistic about what kind of things can happen. Mm -hmm. Okay? I appreciate that. So thank you very much, Mr. Smith. I hope that's been answered any questions you have and got to the bottom of what's exactly been going on. Mm -hmm. And I hope the interventions and medications we implement can help you. I would like to see you in a couple of weeks if that's okay. That's fine. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.